and welcome to another lecture session of introduction to astrophysical fluids. Previously, after deriving magnetohydrodynamic equations, that is the monofluid model of plasma from kinetic theory and multifluid models of plasma, we discussed various interesting features of magnetohydrodynamic fluids, right? So first we discuss the importance of low range force, how can we decompose the low range force uh, into two type of contributions one is like a magnetic pressure another is the tension term okay then also we defined plasma beta and uh, it was followed by a discussion on the frozen in theorem for the uh, for a magnetohydrodynamic fluid okay so um, and then we uh, also saw different types of inviscid invariants so we started by mass conservation then we talked about the very subtle case of linear momentum conservation then we talked about uh, i mean some scalar invariants of which a real scalar invariant was the uh, total energy which had three parts kinetic energy magnetic energy and compressible thermodynamic energy or compressible potential energy and then we uh, also uh, like introduced several pseudo scalars okay which we call the helicities okay so one was the i mean uh, maybe the kinetic helicity is uh, purely i mean of course you you may be known that uh, i mean uh, so uh, this is a purely hydrodynamic concept you you may be accustomed with this concept already then uh, Another was like the cross helicity that is the dot. So kinetic helicity is nothing but the dot product of kinetic helicity density. Okay, whatever we will talk about in terms of densities. Okay, when you integrate that density in uh, the whole space, then you get the total helicity. Okay, so kinetic helicity was nothing but the scalar product of velocity and the vorticity vector. Okay. Then uh, cross helicity was introduced. It was the scalar product of velocity and the magnetic field vector. And finally, we said that uh, there is another helicity which is of very, uh, very importance in MHD, okay, in magnetohydrodynamic case, mostly in turbulence and in other type of uh, like phenomena, okay. So uh, that was the magnetic helicity, which is the scalar product of magnetic field and magnetic vector potential E okay so in this and after uh, okay so in this part we also said a few words okay if you can remember that uh, in which under which circumstances in a practical case we can really assume that our system can follow ideal MHD equations okay and finally we uh, talked about the uh, I mean the very interesting LSSR variables and how can the equations of incompressible MHD can equivalently be projected in the form I mean in terms of the LSSR variables. One thing was very I mean very easy to understand very direct but I did not really mention when I just uh, like followed the lectures I just thought that it is maybe good to say you directly. That is, uh, I mean, in incompressible MHD, as V and B both are divergenceless vectors, V plus V and V minus V, that means Z plus and Z minus, they are also divergenceless. Okay, so uh, the two LSSR variables are actually uh, two solenoidal vectors. So the whole set of MHD equations in terms of LSSR variables are constituted by divergence of z plus is equal to 0, divergence of z minus is equal to 0 and two evolution equations, one for z plus and one for z minus. That constitutes the complete dynamical theory. In today's discussion, we will start discussing the, uh, I mean, the response of an MHD fluid towards a, an external very weak or first order perturbation, linear perturbation. And uh, actually we will see that there will be interesting wave modes okay and of course that says that our chosen initial system which is of course a steady system is such a steady system that uh, the, I mean that it corresponds actually a stable equilibrium 
I mean something analogous to stable equilibrium system okay and that's why the system uh, when it is part of the bit it responds in terms of the linear modes okay whenever we are discussing in this part the waves in MHD fluid we will follow exactly the same steps as what we did for the neutral fluids so if you remember that first of all we start with a steady initial state okay and then we uh, partner every quantity okay by a very uh, weak I mean small amount okay and what we call weak perturbations or linear perturbations and sometimes we call first order perturbations okay and then we study the nature of the response given by the MHD fluid and how first of all I mean after adding after just expressing every quantity as its initial value plus the first order perturbation we try to replace all the values in the original equations and finally we uh, just drop out all the zeroth order terms which are basically nullifying each other due to the zeroth order equations and then we also neglect the second order uh, I mean neglect the terms which are of second order smallness and then we have a set of linear equations okay so with that linear equation finally we assume plane wave type of solution okay and then we try to uh, I mean rather we derive some relation between uh, um, like omega I mean the frequency and the wave vector k which we call in general the dispersion relation okay now let's do that formally over here so here first of all uh, when we study the response of an MHD fluid towards a weak perturbation okay we will for the sake of simplicity at the first step neglect forcing and viscosity it is always a very good question that what happens to the wave modes or to the nature of response if we take the forcing or the viscosity into account that's you to think okay it's a very good question actually now we start from a in from an initial state which is a static steady state so not only that it's a steady that means every quantity is independent of time but the velocity in the initial state is zero so we start with a static case okay and then we perturb the system by a little bit so rho becomes rho 0 plus rho 1 where the initial hydrostatic density was rho 0 v becomes v1 only because v0 is 0 by definition okay so b is the magnetic field and it is just the initial v0 plus the fluctuation okay i mean plus the perturbation and same thing for the pressure so initial pressure plus so which is p0 plus p1 first order perturbation now when we linearize the continuity equation then this equation becomes del rho 1 del t okay because if you remember how to write that so it should write del rho 0 plus rho 1 del t plus divergence of rho 0 plus rho 1 times v is only v1 so it would be equal to 0 now you see del rho 0 del t okay del rho 0 del t and divergence of rho 0 um, uh, so it's it's already 0 because a divergence i mean rho 0 v0 is 0 v0 is 0 so that's why the zero order term is 0 so we all only have del rho 1 del t plus divergence of rho 1 uh, sorry rho 0 v1 we also neglect rho 1 v1 because of the second order smallness okay so finally we have del rho 1 del t so which is so always just cross check that whether your term is of first order smallness or not so del rho 1 del t is of course with first order smallness plus rho 0 divergence of v1 is equal to 0 so that is also of first order smallness okay so this is the linearized equation of continuity then we do the same thing for the momentum evolution equation where you can easily understand that this is again so the rho 0 uh, so there will be rho times del v del t now uh, I mean 
only row 0 can be taken because there is no v0 so I mean in order that the total t thing uh, to be of first order row 0 should be I mean the part of row should contribute to 0th order because the only non-zero contribution from this part would come in the first order there is no 0th order for this part okay so that's why this part is row 0 del v1 del t and you know that there should be no contribution from the part v1 nabla v1 because of its second order smallness so we forget that so that is equal to then minus gradient of p1 okay so gradient of p0 will be i mean uh, balancing with the zeroth order term of the lorentz force of course over here and you see that here we can we can actually uh, if you remember we can actually uh, neglect the body force or the, for example some force like gravity only because you have here another term other than the p okay so that is the Lorentz force if b uh, well a term okay this term this uh, Lorentz force term is not present there then we have to take into account the body force and that is our very usual uh, I mean hydrostatic equilibrium and the hydrostatic uh, first order perturbation okay under gravity or under some conservative force field but here we really don't need that that is simply because that we have this term and this term okay so uh, in the I mean even in the zero order uh, even in the zero order so for example in the zero order what happens just you can take a loop minus plus 1 by mu 0 so um, so this one will be curl of b0 times b0 and of course b0 if you just choose this to be uh, constant then this is 0 but if you don't choose this to be constant then this is simply I mean uh, I mean you don't need to consider this to be a constant in space but it will then simply be cancelled by gradient of p0 okay so now only surviving term is this one 1 by mu0 curl of b1 cross b0 why because uh, if both are 0 that will be 0th order term and will be taken care by the 0th order contribution of pressure okay then if here you have curl of b0 and here you have b1 okay so that is also a bit uh, typical because most of the cases we have seen that the i mean the magnetic field the initial magnetic fields are in general uniform in space maybe sometimes they can have some uh, time dependence but curl of uh, b0 is almost uniform in space but there can be actually uh, instances where you can actually write 1 by mu 0 so what I just said two minutes ago actually there is no inhibition in writing this one that you can totally write but here just for the sake of simplicity we have not written this okay so this is a uh, some of a simplified form and we cannot write both as b1 because that would get a second order smallness so we forget that so finally we can write del v1 del t is equal to minus gradient of p1 by rho 0 plus curl of b1 small b1 cross small b0 how did we get that we have simply got that just by replacing this uh, b by i mean this small uh, capital b by this small b and that was quite easy because if you simply see that if you divide everything by rho 0 then you have this term and here you have mu 0 rho 0 so then you divide into b1 and b0 one mu 0 rho 0 over here and another mu 0 rho 0 over there okay you are done now the third equation of magnetohydrodynamics is the equation of Faraday so equation of induction okay which simply says that del b1 del t is equal to curl of v cross b 
now once again we cannot have any v0 amount so so uh, in order that the total thing should be exactly of first order zeroth order cannot be there because zeroth order will be cancelled by uh, the zeroth order part of the in the left side okay left hand side so the first order term will simply be this one the only possibility because v0 is zero so there should, cannot be any term like carl of v0 cross small b1 okay here i can i can write so the original equation is in terms of capital b but just by dividing every size by root over mu 0 rho 0 you can just write this thing simply okay so and you can you can define your small b just by like this okay so uh, then your Faraday equation is del small b1 del t is equal to carl of v1 cross small b0 okay and finally we consider a polytropic mhd fluid so polytropic fluid means p is equal to k rho to the gamma but when we are talking in terms of the first order perturbations if you recall what we did for normal i mean ordinary hydrodynamic fluid we said that even if the equation is a polytropic there will be always a proportionality relation okay where uh, i mean between the first order perturbation in pressure and first order perturbation in density and the proportionality constant is nothing but the equilibrium sound speed square so gamma p rho by rho zero okay so we are done we have four equations which we need okay so uh, now what we do as a next step we simply assume plane wave solutions for the perturbed quantities so for an arbitrary perturbed quantity psi we can write the perturbed quantity as psi 1 which will be equal to psi 1 0 that is this amplitude times e to the power i k dot r minus omega t okay so you can also like reason this in this part that as these equations are uh, linear in nature for all b1 v1 p1 rho 1 so for all these quantities simply we can i mean assume the solution for uh, every uh, like um, part of quantity as a sum of the fourier uh, components and then we just take we just choose one single fourier component and we will study the uh, relation between the frequency and the wave vector for that um, particular Fourier component so that is the philosophy of this uh, treatment okay so then uh, finally you can just substitute all this type of uh, plane wave solutions in the previous equations that means this one this one this one and this one and finally you will be given this thing so omega p1 is equal to rho 0 c, c square k dot v1 now this one is not exactly uh, obtained from the continuity equation this one can be obtained if you simply write the continuity i mean what can you obtain from the continuity equation so if you just uh, assume this type of solution this one then any del del t will be simply converted into minus i omega and any nabla will be converted with i k right so this thing will be minus i omega rho 1 cap so that is the uh, simply the Fourier transform of this so if you want or you can just write like this that is okay maybe in case it is confusing i can just write like this rho uh, 1 0 plus rho 0 um, k, uh, so there should be k so there will be an i i k dot p1 that is equal to 0 now you just multiply c s square throughout so c s square rho 1 0 will give you p, p 1 0 okay and here you will have i rho 0 c a square k dot v 1 that's where we use this relation and then you just take i 
out of the equation. So your omega p1 will simply be equal to rho 0 c square k dot v1. Okay. So uh, I mean once again. So the this is very easy to understand. You just have to multiply c square. Uh, I mean to the both sides of the linearized continuity equation. And what is this? This is the sorry. Yeah. So this is the uh, linearized momentum evolution equation, which gives you simply omega v one is equal to k times p1 by rho 0 plus b0 dot b1 minus b0 k, k parallel b1. Now what is k parallel? k parallel is, is nothing but the projection of the propagation vector okay uh, in the direction of b0 okay. So that's another way of writing. So if you want this is nothing but b0 dot k okay and this is the induction equation as one can easily guess and this that will be equal to omega b1 small b1 is equal to minus small b0 k parallel v1 plus small b0 times k dot v1 okay so once again this is nothing but b0 dot k so there will be v0 dot k v1 minus plus b0 times k dot v1 okay so you already can see that this gives us the complete set of equations which are no longer differential equations but they are a set of algebraic equations. Now we have three algebraic equations and we have actually three unknowns. Which are those three unknowns? One is V1, one is B1, one is P1 and our basic objective is to get rid of all these three to get the relation between omega and k which is known as the dispersion relation and if that dispersion relation give, can give us real frequency then we will see we will th I mean confirm that there will be uh, linear wave modes if there will be an imaginary part in the omega then we have the possibility of a linear instability okay. So if we just eliminating at the first step b1 and p1 we simply get omega square minus k dot b0 times v1 is equal to c a square plus b0 square times k dot v1 minus v1 dot b0 k dot b0 everything up to this this total thing is multiplied with k vector minus k dot b0 times k dot v1 times b0 okay so this is the whole thing where you cannot see p1 you cannot see b1 the only variable is v1 now so this is another technique when you have not one equation but you have uh, i mean an equation like this uh, so from that you can also just i mean i mean you so directly you cannot uh, find from here I mean so just from here directly you cannot find omega as a function of k so first of all you have to get rid of two unknowns and then you just reduce the everything in only one vectorial unknown and here which is the v1 and then what you have to do this is a classical trick that you have to learn so now if uh, first of all we would do some smart choice of the direction of the propagation vector and that choice for our case will be and you will see why this is very good because if we just choose without losing any generality that our k is having two components so along x direction there is no component for k only k perpendicular is along y direction and k parallel is about z direction that is why I am saying once again this is k parallel because the parallel sign comes when it is parallel to capital B0 or I mean small b0 okay so whatever that is not a problem because both have the same direction here now capital B0 okay so uh, this one simply will 
be written as b0 times ez cap and uh, then you can simply say that uh, the y direction will be perpendicular to b0 so that's why this is k parallel perpendicular and z direction is parallel to b0 that's why there is k parallel okay if we project those equations i mean in this choice of k and b0 then uh, the total uh, equation this one as you can easily understand this one is a vector equation in v0 v1 so there should be three component equations and we can write the whole set of three component scalar equations corresponding to every component in matrix form and this matrix is now written in a block form that means this part and this part they are actually decoupled okay the ideal will be ideal would be if that would be totally diagonalized that means you have only here here and here everything otherwise nothing 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 but this is a bit uh, i mean worse than that but still we should be happy because at least we can decouple one mode totally from the other two modes okay so if you now write this in this matrix form then one can easily say that from the linear algebra that for non-trivial solution of b1 what is the necessary i mean the required condition that the determinant of this whole matrix must vanish okay and this when you uh, calculate the determinant of this and will equate this to zero that will give you the dispersion relation so just Remember this trick that trick is actually is useful for many general systems. Okay, and then the dispersion relation finally is free of V1, B1 and P1 and will simply carry relation between omega, k and other constants of the system. Okay, so what is that relation? Omega square minus k parallel square B0 square times within the bracket you have something so omega to the 4 minus within bracket c a square plus b0 square times k square omega square plus k square c a square k parallel square b0 square and that is equal to 0 okay now we can easily understand that from this one since we are not talking about the negative solutions of omega so just considering positive solutions of omega we can see that there are three solutions which are possible so one is from this and two are from this part okay so the first one is of course this one omega a is equal to k parallel b0 so another way of writing this is omega a is nothing but k uh, sorry omega a is equal to k dot b0 that is another part i mean way of writing and this mode is called Alphen mode okay this mode is of super importance in different aspects of MHD including MHD turbulence other other phenomena like um, heating okay this type of things are there high correlation between V and B all things are there okay now the other two solutions which can be uh, obtained from this equation okay these two solution will be uh, written in this form in a compact way omega plus is equal to k by root 2 and with a, a bigger root square root you can write square root c a square plus b0 square plus root over c a square plus b0 square whole square minus 4 c s square b0 square times k parallel square by k square okay clear now for omega minus as you can see it will be k by root over 2 then the same thing root over uh, square root overall and then you have c s square plus b0 square then you have the distinction between these two so here it there was plus and now you have minus okay and then within the bracket you have the same factor same term so this one is known as the fast mode and this one is known as the slow mode okay now um, 
it is true that when your equations are uh, incompressible MHT equation that means all the, the velocity vector is uh, solenoidal okay all the k dot v type of things there being zero type zero this type of thing I mean uh, like divergence of v or in in Fourier mode actually k dot um, v Fourier is equal to zero whatever okay so in this type of case uh, you can simply uh, I mean understand that Alvin mode is an incompressible MHD mode because at this condition only one mode survives and that is the Alvin mode that you can actually check so my suggestion will be uh, you start from here and you just try to understand that which things should be changed or rather you can start directly from here which thing should be changed if you have incompressible MHD. So one thing is very simple to see that you have this one is 0. This one right. So this one is also 0. So this this, this can be a bit uh, yeah this can be a bit tricky. So just try on your own and show and actually you will see that this is somehow very easy to show that only one web mode will then retains and that web most should look like this I mean uh, should have a dispersion relation like this okay um, then another point is that actually one can show that so my request for you uh, to show that that the velocity the phase velocity of the slow mode is actually less than or equal to the phase velocity of the Alvin mode and that will be uh, less than equal to the phase velocity of the first mode. So can you do just uh, simple algebraic calculations and tell me so I can help you Okay, But before that let us do something very interesting first of all I said that if your uh, set of equations are uh, Incompress I, I mean are of incompressible nature then I said that just you can check and verify that the only uh, dispersion relation which you get is that of the Alvin modes but we can do something very easily uh, we can just say that for Al if we just take the dispersion relation of the Alvin mode which is omega is equal to omega a is equal to k parallel b0 and then we simply uh, write this expression for omega in this equation that omega square minus k parallel whole square b0 square times v1 x is equal to 0 and which simply says that uh, as this one is 0 then this equation will be true even when v1 x is non-zero right now what happens for these two equations so for example if you write these two equations in a set of linear equations then you will see that this one times v1y plus this one times v1z is 0 and similarly this thing times v1y plus this thing times v1z is also equal to 0. Now we I mean so it is nothing but an eigenvalue problem right so in this for this matrix you just uh, so try this value so uh, when omega is equal to so you just you just you just check i mean not exactly eigenvalue problem i am not really uh, very much very very much correct in that sense but just to tell you that i am just checking how does it behave when omega is equal to k parallel b0 that's it then this part is zero so this part does not need to be zero and what will be the form of this part that way I will check so under that condition this part will be so we have these two equations what we I just said that omega square minus k para perpendicular square c a square minus k square b0 square times v1y okay minus k perpendicular k parallel c a square v1z is equal to 0 okay and then minus k perpendicular k parallel c a square v1 y plus omega square minus k parallel square c a square v1 z is equal to 0. 
okay now if I just use this value for omega then I will simply get minus k perpendicular square cs square plus b0 square times v1y minus k perpendicular k parallel cs square v1z is equal to 0 then here you have minus v perpendicular v uh, sorry k perpendicular k parallel cs square v1y minus k parallel square cs square plus b0 square v1z is equal to 0. So I just eliminate v1y from both these equations and then I will have these two things to be equal from where you can easily cancel k parallel and k perpendiculars accordingly and you will have this relation. So one possibility is of course v1z is 0. The other possibility is cs to the 4 will be equal to cs square plus b0 square whole square as the cs square should be positive then c s square should be simply equal to c s square plus b0 square in case v1z is not equal to 0 and that simply gives us b0 square is equal to 0 and which is not possible which simply violates our main assumption that there is a magnetic field otherwise this is no longer a, an MHD fluid so this is impossible so v1z must be equal to 0 and similarly you can show v1y is also 0 so the only non-zero component of V is the X component and so our V can be written in this way but our propagation vector as our smart choice said is equal to 0 K perpendicular and K parallel. So we can simply write that K dot V is equal to 0. Okay. So the particle velocity is perpendicular to the wave propagation and that's the definition of a transverse mode okay so when you simply pluck at one point of a tense string and then release it then basically the string vibrates and you say that it vibrates and the vibration or the part of, I mean disturb is propagating like maybe in this direction but the particle is vibrating in this direction so this is nothing but a a uh, classical example of a transverse wave and you all know that all this uh, like light heat all these electromagnetic waves um, in vacuum at least okay so I mean not I mean yeah okay in vacuum at least they are always perfectly transverse waves okay so um, just to tell you that um, so transverse simply means that the per particle velocity and the uh, propagation direction they are mutually perpendicular okay now uh, simply uh, once again so as this is the case then k dot v is also equal to 0 it simply says that v perpendicular I mean I mean uh, simply that uh, v I mean okay so in our case v is parallel to x okay as we saw and so the Fourier component of v is also parallel to x you can simply say that this is well here either you can use Fourier component or you can say that the amplitude of the uh, plane wave solution okay and then this is also according to x I mean along the x direction and then we can actually get k dot vk which is the Fourier uh, component of v which is also zero so it simply says this is nothing this is nothing but the uh, incompressibility condition so this wave mode is also incompressible okay and that's why uh, even in a, the, this wave mode appears as a totally decoupled mode from the other two modes in the compressible MHD the nature of this mode is in incompressible in nature okay now my question is what about the dispersive nature of Alvin wave well the dispersion relation is this one and here the question is how to define the phase velocity so the phase velocity actually is given by parallel so it's omega by the uh, the wave vector parallel to the direction of propagation and that's exactly the uh, I mean should be the proper definition of phase velocity and that is uh, simply given here just by VA okay on the other end if you do VG and VG is nothing but this and that will be equal to this and if you do uh, this one uh, very rightly 
you will see that is also equal to sub VG equal to VA. So VG is equal to VP and uh, they, are, they are independent of K. So this is a non-dispersive mode. Okay. Non-dispersive mode as VP omega by k parallel is equal to Vg equal to k omega tak. okay so this is what uh, is the brief story about the Alvin mode what about the other two so there are two other modes one is called the fast mode okay so that is this one so this one is called the fast mode and this one is called the second I mean the sorry the slow mode okay it's not first it's fast mode okay so fast mode has this um, dispersion relation so omega plus is equal to we just call it as omega plus and omega minus for slow modes okay so omega plus is k by root 2 and this whole factor as I said now this factor just try to understand this factor can have a maximum value when this term is minimum because this is getting subtracted from this one and this term is minimum when k parallel is equal to 0 so that means when the propagation is perpendicular to b0 right that means the propagation vector has no parallel component and in this condition k parallel is 0 so this is 0 and this total thing within the bracket is nothing but c a square plus b0 square okay so uh, so that is actually c a square plus b0 square whole square and when you take the root over that will give you simply c a square plus b0 square now so this is the maximum case and the minimum case is when this one is almost equal to k and then what happens you have c s square plus b0 square whole square minus 4 c s square b0 square which is nothing but c s square minus b0 square whole square now we don't know which one is greater so if your beta is greater than 1 very i mean big value then c s is actually greater than b0 so it should be then c this one should be equal to c s square minus b0 square okay the whole thing under i mean uh, taking into account the roots as well and if we are considering the case of a uh, low beta case then this one will be simply b0 square minus c square okay so uh, in the first case okay so what happens that in the first case so uh, just a minute yeah so let me just start by saying the maximum case so the for the phase speed which is omega by k uh, that is equal to v and that will simply be then given by the maximum uh, so this I mean that will have a maximum value which should be then so you can easily understand that omega plus by k which is the um, phase speed that will have the maximum value when this will have the maximum value so the maximum value will simply be root over c a square plus b0 square plus c a square plus b0 square so you will have a root 2 times root over c a square plus b0 square uh, okay and then you can simply say that this is exactly what is our uh, phase speed so phase speed is root over cx square plus b0 square this root 2 and there will be another root 2 which cancels each other so this is the case where this value has a maximum value this one okay and this is the this corresponds to the maximum phase speed now what will be the minimum phase speed so minimum phase speed means for high value of beta this is c s square minus b0 square 
so when you just write this total thing it will be c s square plus b zero square plus c s square minus b zero square so you will have only two c s square so again root two and root two will cancel each other so you will have a cs for high beta so for high beta this fast mode reduces to nothing but to a acoustic mode sound wave mode and for low beta the fast mode reduces to an alpen mode okay and that actually when its propagation is perpendicular to beta b0 because in that way uh, the way when this is minimum when k parallel is almost equal to the k total so that means the propagation is the propagation vector is almost aligned with respect to the v0 or aligned to the v0 okay but this is also the transverse mode okay so you see that when at the minimum value so minimum phase speed corresponds to the sound speed for high beta and corresponds to alvin speed for low beta hmm. i have made some mistake just a minute let me just this one sorry b0 okay this is the alvin speed as well now it is true that here we have written uh, just a minute so what about the nature so Mm, yeah, it is true that I have at some point I have to write this. That is equivalent to B zero over here. Okay, and so that is B zero. So yeah. Okay, so B zero is the Alvin speed for us. Okay, so it is not. K dot V A, but it's K dot B zero. Okay. Now, what is the story for slow mode? So, for slow modes, what happens? So, omega minus is equal to K by root two and the times the whole factor, and the whole factor again is maximum when this one is zero and it has C S square plus B zero square. And is minimum when this thing inside the root over is equal to once again this is then just one and you have the whole thing as mod of c s square so the whole thing root over is mod of c s square minus b zero square so then this phase speed is actually uh, is equal to c s when your system's beta I mean is less than one. And this is converted or reduced to the Alvin mode when your system has a high beta. So if your system has a high beta, the fast mode, okay, becomes acoustic, but the slow mode, okay, becomes Alvinic. When your system has a low beta, the fast mode becomes Alvinic. The slow mode becomes acoustic. Okay. Now my question to you to think: Are fast and slow modes dispersive? And actually, if you think very, uh, I mean deeply, you will see that none of those three these three modes are dispersive in nature in general. Okay. So here, uh, actually, at this point, I am just uh, putting an end to the discussion of the web scene MHD. and it is a very vast chapter there are the several books which are only written on the waves in mhd okay so this is a vast subject of research and uh, analysis okay so uh, in various so now the question is in the context of space and astrophysics these wave modes are very very important because this leads to several phenomena and this controls different type of behavior of an mhd fluid and that's why Uh, a very good knowledge at even if not much mathematical knowledge but at least a very good uh, knowledge about those three modes are very much important so one thing to be said that unlike the incompressible alvin mode the last two modes which are uh, the fast mode and the slow mode they are only appearing 
when your system is compressible when you, you are talking about mhd compressible mhd okay so that's why these two modes are known as sonic modes and they are called fast magnetosonic sonic mode and slow magnetosonic mode okay since there are the two contributions in general one is from magnetic field another is from the acoustic wave okay that's why they are called fast and slow magnetosonic or magnetoacoustic modes okay all these vocabularies are there okay so um, from the next lecture we will start discussing um, two or three interesting applications of mhd and then i will pass to the i mean um, discussion of turbulence as well okay thank you very much